You know, the word classic is thrown around way too much nowadays. People listen to an album once and instantly throw out that word. It's kind of lost its meaning. But Manger on McNichols by Baldy James and Stan and Tolls is just that, a classic. It is the best album of the decade so far, and I don't think an album has ever intrigued me so much like this one before. Reducing the album to just jazz rap is kind of disrespectful. It's much, much more than that. We all know Baldy James is a rare talent. Matching quality work with consistent output, his deadpan delivery and clear-cut flow is so recognisable at this point, and it has helped him build one of the best catalogues in Detroit's history. But you see, in this album, Stale and Tolls is the craftsman. One thing that I feel like is important to do as a producer is to find the threads within the the music, the the lyrics, and tie it all together. So I saw themes forming from early on in us creating this record. Do you know what makes this album special? It is time. How many artists can say they seriously took over a decade perfecting an album? Well that is what Sterling done. You see, the vocals on this album were recorded during the late 2000s, during some of the most important moments in Baldy's life, which I will go through when I dissect the track list. But these verses were almost pushed to the side, but Sterling, well, he would chip away at them for the next 10 years. A lot of the biggest creatives in history are against the idea of being a perfectionist, but in this case, Stan and taking a decade to craft instrumentals around Baldy's vocals, filling in every single gap, was the best thing to happen. Speaking of which, in a 2020 interview, Stan said this, Baldy's rhymes have open space. It allowed me to add sounds that grow and blossom in those spaces. Also, because the subject matter was so dark, it gave me an opportunity to make something beautiful. I wanted to make a rap record that you could sonically pick apart, just like Radiohead's OK Computer. Sterling's instrumentals are an essential space between hip hop, jazz, electronic and funk, and I think what makes this album so unique is contrast. You see, Baldy's haunting words over Sterling's beautiful production is just perfect. You can just tell that over a decade of work went into this, and that is all credit Stern and Tolls. A lot of people almost group together all of the underground hip hop renaissance as just your typical glorifying of the street culture, but that just isn't true, and Baldy on this album displays unbelievable amounts of self reflection, and shows more emotion than most mainstream artists have in their careers. We begin with the track Medusa, which sees Baldy looking for a way out of the street life. He dives into the American employment system and how employees will turn down anyone with jailhouse tattoos and felonies. Baldy explores the vicious cycle, explaining how it is impossible to escape. Rent is due after all. And remember, these vocals were recorded in the late 2000s, and Baldy mentions how he has a baby on the way. Well. Stan and Tolls revealed that Baldy actually had twins on the way, but he ended up losing them. So by the middle of the album, uh, that baby that was on the way turned out to be twins. And for circumstances I won't fully go into, um, the twins didn't end up making it, and that wasn't supposed to happen. One theme runs throughout this album, and that is Baldy's relationship with his mother. I'll touch on this theme more throughout the video, but Baldy initially turned to the streets after his relationship with his mother dissolved, and he returns to the street when he becomes a parent. It's a cycle. Baldy just has this cold aura on this track, and it might just be his best flow to date. Pair that with the chilling, melancholic violin melodies that Sterling uses, and you have a perfect opener. We then transition into Welcome to 76, an instrumental built on raging flutes, alternative saxophones and live percussion. Sterling's instrumentals aren't patterned like the norm, instead they are freeform, fluttering in and out. 
And I don't want to make this video all about Sterling, as Baldi is just as important to this album. But Sterling's production is unlike anything I've ever heard before. Baldi portrays the life of Detroit and he displays the cold heartedness of his life perfectly on this track. The landscape Baldi paints is almost overwhelming at points. And one term will keep popping up throughout this video, and that is instrumental progression. I asked on Twitter what people's favourite thing off this album was, and the same thing kept appearing. It's how the instrumentals develop throughout the track's runtime. Welcome to 76 is no different. I'll show you. I'll play three different parts of the track. Tell them, do we run from the pause? Tell them, welcome to my humble abode. Tell me, how could you testify and squeal on your familiar? Look at me dead in my rent. And if you hadn't heard this track before, there's no way you'd expect all this to come from the same song. And this track isn't even the best example. We move into Detroit River Rock, where Baldi's chilling lyrics build a simulation of Detroit. He paints a picture so well with his lyricism that even people who have never been to Detroit get a sense of what the city is like. But pressure bus pipes in my pressure up. Yeah. Yeah. Retaliation is a must. Well, I'ma hit you with your motherfuckers better duck. Bullets is cheap. And once again, the instrumentation is perfect. Almost symphony like. Baldi's vocals are almost the main instrument in the first verse. That's just the way the music patterns. Then we get one of Baldi's best hooks and the drums burst into the track. Clip for a drop reload, lock and load, click draw, cock and hold, rock and roll, discharge, fire in a hole like. Clip for a drop reload, lock and load, click draw, cock and hold, rock and roll. Bullets is cheaper than Boo Friend, so press your luck. It is one of the most potent lines on the album. At present time, Baldi is a very successful and established hip hop artist with a cult following. He doesn't need to return to the street to feed himself and his family, but at the time of recording it was more value of Baldi to be part of that culture rather than pursue his career and his dreams. It is an exploration of the system that so many Americans are stuck in. We get a perfect transition into B.B. Butcher, which opens with a monologue from influential Detroit media icon, Martha Steinberg. During Detroit's 1967 civil disturbance, she remained on air for 48 hours straight, imploring her listeners to stay off Detroit streets. Baldi's content on this track is some of his most chilling, exploring his paranoid psyche due to the life he is living, even exploring PTSD from seeing someone get murdered when he was still a child. And he once again brings up his fractured relationship with his mother. I'm never satisfied like my mommy, she said, Jay, babe, just like your father, bold and cold. This is one of my favourite songs of all time, and possibly my favourite on the album. Baldi's cold delivery is something, but Sterling's production, wow. The instrumental begins in an almost high BPM breakbeat fashion, but quickly transcends into something much more, an almost paranoid, high intensity, orchestral drum and bass beat. Like just listen to this breakdown right at the end of the track. It's one of my favourite pieces of music of all time. Is another topic of discussion about this album. The complementation between the instrumentals and vocals. It's insane. On this track, Baldi is paranoid, and that is what the instrumental sounds like. It's rushing around looking for an answer. The mirroring between the lyrics and production is something Stern and Tolls mastered on this album. And before I move on, I need to mention the transitions. Each track flows perfectly into the next. You can tell that is the product of the time and effort Sterling put into this album. 
We transition into middle of next month, which sees Baldy explore a variety of topics. He opens the first verse by acknowledging his loss of his children, and how he feels that everything in his life is going against him. He explores the paranoia that came with the life he's lived. He doesn't know who his real friends are. And some of the most important lines pop up on his second verse. That's the thing about this dirty game. It never fails. The big house or an early grave. Once again, Baldy explores the system that America has developed. And that system, there's no way out. You either make it at the top or fall directly into your grave. But you have no other option because these cities have been neglected for decades by the higher powers. And this brings me into another main topic of the album. It is duality. It is a fight between who you intrinsically are versus who you extrinsically are. It's about our spirit versus the way we have been conditioned. How our lives can change due to the limitations of our environment. Sterling admitted this in a 2020 interview which I'd highly recommend watching. And one thing that a lot of people criticise about the underground rap scene is the hook game. But here, Baldy delivers an incredibly infectious hook. Till I'm cashing, I'm a prey on your mommy and your pa. Tell them happy Father's Day. Tell them happy Kwanzaa. Tell her happy Mother's Day. Tell her happy Hanukkah before I blow your fucking brain. And I'll probably say this another five times before the video finishes. But this instrumental is truly mind blowing. Every time you listen to it, you'll hear a new sample, a new synth, a new kick. It is one of the most laid instrumentals I have ever heard. We then transition into the shortest track on the album, The Safe, almost acting as an interlude. Baldy almost whispers over Sterling's laid back production. And you know, I'll let Sterling explain this one. There's several things that happen in this process of once the duality is established out the middle of next month, it goes into The Safe. The safe, to me, is what prefaces you for Mommy Dearest. On the safe, he started off talking about preparing to rob somebody at, at Christmas time. And he starts off by saying, you know, towards the night before Christmas and all of the house, you know, for all of that. Realizing that, you know, his relationship to his mother was was conflicted. And coming to the realization that, you know, he, he know she wished she had an abortion, it put him in a space to, you know, have this kind of life where he, he's preparing to rob somebody at Christmas time. So they get into this house, they get led to this safe, and then the song stops. We then hit the centerpiece of the album, Mommy Dearest. Built around a line from Biggie's suicidal thoughts. Was there any particular song of yours you remember that she really, that she found super depressing? I referenced the uh, Biggie song where he said, you know, his mama wish she had a fucking bush. I made a hook out of that line. And it was just my mommy dear. This, of course, is the Biggie track, Suicidal Thoughts, from Ready to Die, that Boldy sampled for Mommy Dearest. Unfortunately, Mommy Dearest doesn't appear to be anywhere online, and because Boldy's out on tour, he was unable to get us the track in time for the release of this episode. The song was just dark. My man Sterling Toes, he produced it, and he started telling me to be more personal. You know, the more like personal I, I got, the darker my music got. got my this is a true internal monologue in which Baldy hits his introspective peak as he picks apart his relationship with his mother and how it made him the man he is today. Baldy opens the first verse with the lines, sometimes I feel like a motherless child, and ends the verse with, I don't show love, I'm heartless. The heartlessness he was shown as a child now reflects into the cold heartedness of his oldest self and translates that directly into the drug game. It's quite the opposite of a song like All I Got Is You by Ghostface. He also explores how he fractured his relationship with his younger sibling, as he was jealous of the love his mother showed to his younger. Asking a mommy where daddy went, to a daddy where mommy at, him telling me she ain't coming back, me looking at my four year old sister, 
Tears running down her poor little dimples, damn Memories when it was hard for your little mans Can it be that it was all so simple then? This is one of my favourite songs of all time and the heartbreak Baldy displays on this set in verse is almost heart-wrenching. Throughout his life he has been this cold-hearted monster stuck in the drug game, but here he shows how the innocence of his childhood and how that innocence was ripped away when his mother turned his back on him, almost creating the concreture that he became. Telling me that you was on your way to come see me And left me sitting on the porch in the rain freezing Had me feeling like a wolf in the pain stinging And getting stunned by a hornet ain't the same neither It went further and way deeper than a heartbreak And man boggling brain freezing That's why the final lines on the verse are If you love someone, let them know As Baldy believes the neglect he was shown Led to the series of unfortunate events that followed and that entrance to the final verse from the hook is one of my favourite moments on the entire album. Since I was a itty bitty baby in the stomach, I know my mother wish she got a, wish she got a, wish she got a. Dear, dear mommy, dearest, I'm dying to live so I stay strapped. You tried to kill me, I died and Some I came back. Not and once again, Baldy exposed the cycle of inner city America. He was once an innocent child on the other end of a robbery, but with the environment he grew up in, he ends up being on the other side of that robbery, as we find out on the safe. His mother's neglect is a part of it, that's true, but it is also the system he was placed in. The limitation of his environment led him to be the person he once feared. The writing on this song is some of my favourite ever. You can just tell how Baldy is absolutely heartbroken because of his childhood, and the instrumental palette that switches up every verse perfectly reflects this. The track then perfectly flows in a birth of bald. This track samples Aaliyah's Age Ain't Nothing But A Number and is an almost a dedication to the perseverance that Baldy has showed to make it at this point. It's the most triumphant song on the tracklist and it is a good change of pace after the five minute depressive epic that is Mommy Dearest. It's like a parade of Baldy's achievements after his painful origin story. And Sterling's composition on this track is also amazing. It begins as an almost G-funk joint until around 50 seconds before the end, where a Russian bass line kicks in and the instrumental transforms completely into a sound that would fit directly onto Flying Lotus's Cosmogrammer. We then move into the drumless track, Requiem, which sees Baldy's flow act as the main instrument alongside a spot of bass and some waving synths. This is a storytelling track in which Baldy tells the story of one of his youngers, but this story could easily be applied to so many different cities in America. A fractured childhood and poor role models leading someone down the wrong path in life, eventually ending with him killing his own family members. We open the next track, Why Are You In Here, with a speech from Detroit's own DJ and record producer, Moody Man. Detroit is a dying city. Well, I'm gonna die with that motherfucker. If it wasn't for Detroit, I wouldn't be the motherfucker I am today. You know, so I'm not leaving my baby. I'm gonna stick with it. That motherfucker fall down to the ground. Well, y'all pray for me, because I'm gonna fall with that one. This track is the second shortest on the record, just shy of one minute, and has one of the more intriguing instrumentals on the album. We have a choir sound and sample that comes in and out of the tracks, rattling keys and random synths. In this track, Baldy overpowers the instrumental compared to the others. In this track is probably the most typical Baldy content on the album, and that isn't a bad thing, as he dives deeper into the drug game. We then hit the climax of the album, the eight and a half minute epic that is goth flicked. Look, I don't feel like I'm gonna do this song justice. It's such a difficult song for me to break down in such a short time and I have some sort of emotional connection with this song that I can't really explain. It's one of very few songs to ever give me goosebumps, and I implore everyone who has made it at this point 
When this video is finished, go turn the song on, no distractions, close your eyes. There's just a different feeling I can't describe. We begin with some guitar strings and what sounds like a saxophone, and Louis P. Newton opens the track with an almost spoken word piece. And this is just my perspective, but I feel like he's speaking from beyond the grave here, and the lines on screen now is why I feel that way. This track reminds me a lot of Sleep off the Roots Undone, as someone looks back on their life once they've passed away, and one of the most telling lines are, probably could have been president, if I ain't grew up a Detroit resident. Replace Detroit with New York, Atlanta, and countless other places, the statement remains the same. The system keeps people locked, almost grounded. The opportunities are severely limited, and as I said earlier, our life depends on the limitations of our environment. In Detroit's case, the opportunities are so low that so many people turn to the drug game as a way out. And the instrumental remains calm and almost relaxing, right up until the halfway into Baldi's first verse where it completely explodes with drums. Gretel in my kitchen pirates right next to the kettle open the can in farina right next to the pet mill with my strap on the seat full of dishes and residue phone tapped out deep and my meat is just hella low who in the hell is thinking that that kid would be selling dope and just listen to Baldi's flow at the beginning of the verse it's completely perfect under the pale moonlight, you niggas never dance with the devil. Stay troopers behind you while you slam on your pedal. Getting that rego hand on your metal mag and a special sandwich bag full of pebbles. And it's max if they catch you. Baldy says later on in the verse, who in the hell would think that that kid would be selling dope? And that's just it. Once again, it is Baldy exploring the path of life and how every little moment leads us somewhere. Just like his mother leaving him, or seeing someone get murdered when he was 11. He's contrasting the innocence of his childhood with who he has became. It's all about the cycle. If you're ready to leave, here are the keys to heaven. Go. They are the last lines on the verse and once again tie into the theme of death and resurrection. And then, in the final two verses, Baldy basically sums up where his life has led him. In the prison, hoping that this fan charge don't stick to my black ass. Put a pedal down the foothill, with his on the front, on the dino with the black man's black man's rhinos in my black man. Black flag, red rag, representing brick slabs, six flags, seven cents of big ass. Big bag, get cash, selling niggas brick slabs, big hair, seven tens and nick bags. This song is called The Rebirth because, well, in Detroit, you'll die, and if you are reborn, you'll end up just stuck in the same cycle and system you were in before. And that is Manger on McNichols, a story of childhood versus parenthood, innocence versus killer. It's one of the most beautifully crafted albums of all time, and I can't thank Baldy James and Stan and Tolls enough for this record. And you know what? If you've made it to this point, go throw on the album now, really listen to it, and I hope after this video you've brand new appreciation of it that's all i want i'm not expecting this to do well in views i just wanted to talk about my favorite album leave a like and subscribe if you did enjoy it means the well to me and i'm just gonna leave you with this when i came up it was it was like uh, what they call it sensory overload it was surreal you know like colors were just brighter eye like I had never seen it before. Like I had never seen the color of the leaves on the tree or something. Like I had never seen sunlight reflecting off the paint of a car. You know, and just knowing that you know you are alive and this is act this actually happened and where you just walked up, you know, is is really and truly behind you.